Hello, everyone. Today's program is Resources for a Successful Job Interview. My name is Paul, and I'm a librarian here at the St. Louis County Library. There's my email address, just in case you want to get in touch with me, ask me any questions that you might have after the program. Want to thank you for being here today. If you have a question, please use the chat feature. I'll be checking that throughout the program this evening, but we've only got a few people in this class. So if you do want to unmute your mic, that's okay. If you have specific questions about your job hunt, your employment situation, your career transition, please use our Book a Librarian feature. And we'll, we'll be talking about that in just a moment. And all the resources we're going to be using today require a St. Louis County Library card to log in. I notice uh, Andrea has just joined us today. Andrea, thank you for being here. Okay, let's handle all questions until after the program is over. Book a Librarian, uh, this is a program where you can sit down one-on-one -on -one with a reference librarian and talk about your career transition situation. You may, your transition may be completely different than what anyone else is going through. And because it's your, your transition, it will be different. And that's great because a program like what we're doing today, we can't always optimize it for every individual person. But if you book a librarian with us, then you can tell us what your situation is and we can work with you and give you the resources that you need. They may be St. Louis County Library resources. They may be St. Louis community resources. They may even be other libraries, for instance, that may have resources that we don't have. So Book a Librarian is a great way to sit down one-on-one -on -one with us and let us know what you need. Give us a chance to help you. Here are the resources that we're going to be using today. The first one is LinkedIn Learning. This is formerly lynda.com. So if you've used lynda.com, LinkedIn Learning is the successor resource to Linda. Next will be Gale Courses. First Research, which is an industry database. And assuming we have enough time, and I think we probably will this evening, we're going to be looking at Brain Fuse Job Now, which if you've used tutor.com and if you've been following some of my programs earlier in the year and last year, you may already know about tutor.com, but that's going to be replaced by Brain Fuse Job Now, which has some really nice interviewing features that I'm going to show you a little bit later on today. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my PowerPoint. And I want to share the St. Louis County Library homepage. And we're going to start taking a look at these databases. So first one we're going to be looking at is LinkedIn Learning. So I'm just going to rest my mouse on Booksy Media and more. And actually what I want is I need to be resting my mouse on using the library because I want under personalized learning e-courses. And you notice you also see book a library, and this is the link that you would use to fill out the form that will get you scheduled for a book a library and appointment with one of us. So I'm gonna click on e-courses, and you'll notice Gale courses in the first row. We'll look at that in just a moment. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit farther and click on LinkedIn Learning. So let's get started. I'm going to type in St. Louis County Library card number, then my PIN number, and then click Continue. Must have messed something up. Let's see. Let's try this again. I think it's going to work. Okay, LinkedIn Learning is a great 
online learning resource. Uh, what you've got is video, audio, which lasts anywhere from five minutes to a few hours. And they get very in-depth in various topics. Yeah, the other nice thing about LinkedIn Learning is even though it has a technology focus, as you would expect from LinkedIn Learning, it does have a number of non-tech resources there. There are quite a few transition resources as well in LinkedIn Learning. So I'm just going to type at the very top, interviewing. So it gives me the option of hiring and interviewing 44 course results. Let's do that. And then it gives us 54 results for hiring and interviewing. So here is this first one, interviewing techniques. It's an hour and 17 minutes. So let me just click on interviewing techniques here. thousand people in jobs. I've trained thousands of recruiters and talent acquisition professionals on how to improve their interviewing skills. Okay, I'm going to stop Barbara Bruno here for just a moment because this is one of the, uh, the difficult things about interviewing is this is for a human resource professional who is interviewing job hunters. This is probably not the focus that we want to be looking at today. The trouble with the word interviewing, though, is that interviewing can mean uh, a human resource professional interviewing a job hunter, but uh, it can also be techniques for interviewing for people who are looking for a job, who are sitting for an interview. So I'm going to hit my back button because this is not relevant for our program this evening. Here's one a little farther down, because this second one, job interviewing for leaders and managers, I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to be it either, but this mastering common interview questions, it's about an hour in length. Preparing for an interview. I'm going to stop Valerie here for just a moment. Um, it looks like like this one is going to be better for us. Yeah, do most uh, do most jobs require interviews? Yes. Yeah, that's that's a pretty uh, pretty standard uh, pretty standard situation that you're going to have to go through when uh, when you're interviewing. Is yes, uh, most jobs these days do require an interview. So here is a 50 minute course on preparing for common interview questions. It's done by Valerie Sutton, it says, a, a thought leader in career theory and student services. So her emphasis might be for students, but that doesn't mean that this wouldn't be good preparation for any of us who are applying for jobs. But I'm just going to scroll down a little farther to let you see what the course details are. And this was updated 7-12-2021. So this is less than a year old. I like to see that. The reason why I like to see up to date uh, within the last year or last two years is anything that's updated fairly frequently is going to take into consideration the pandemic, COVID-19, and the various career transition difficulties and advantages that, that folks have these days. For instance, two years ago, it was very difficult to find a job because a lot of, a lot of companies, especially in the retail, anything dealing with public service were lay, laying folks off because they were, they were without customers. People couldn't come out and visit. So last year at this time, we were going through what folks were calling the great, the, the great resignation. And that was where people decided, hey, 
I don't want to work anymore. I don't need to work anymore. Or I have found another job. Maybe it's entrepreneurship. Maybe it's the gig economy. But I have found other work where I don't need to get back into the rat race of applying for jobs anymore. And so we lost a lot of uh, a lot of people to retirement. Even uh, a lot of baby boomers are getting retirement age and just decided, hey, that pandemic was enough for me. I'm going to get out while I can. And so there are a lot of jobs. There are more jobs than uh, than people who are looking for jobs right now. So that those are the types of things that a a recently produced video is going to take into consideration. Let's look a little farther down, learning, learning objectives, interview preparation, good uh, related courses. I like this. We've got more, more interview, but also more career related, but not necessarily interview. Some of these are assuming that you've already, you've already, already got the job. So just want to scroll down again on the left side and let you see what the various chapters look like. And just like to remind everyone, please mute your microphone if you haven't done so already. So this is a fairly simple search from LinkedIn Learning. I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to type in interviewing again. And rather than choosing the hiring and interviewing, which give us 40 or 50, I'm going to choose one of these maybe interviewing skills for interview E, because this might be a little more focused on what we're looking for. So how to, how to rock an interview, 28 minutes long, I like that. Here's one that's only two minutes long, communicating why you are the best fit. One of the questions that folks ask me about LinkedIn Learning is, will I receive a certificate at the end of completion? Let's say you've, you've completed uh, one, of these, uh, one of these interviewing courses. Yes, you will receive a, uh, you will receive a certificate, but it's not going to have your name on it. And the reason why is that public libraries uh, wanted to make sure that their customers' privacy was being respected. So LinkedIn Learning does not have access to your name. It doesn't know that you are taking this course. You are anonymized. So you will get a certificate. It just will not have your name. Take a look at the chat. See any questions? Uh, yes. Uh, very good point. All, all job interviews ex expect you to dress neatly. And that's a, that's a fairly common question. And that, that's something also that LinkedIn Learning has a, has a course on. But, you know, the question is, how, how neatly should I dress or how formally should I dress in an interview? And one, uh, one good advice that I've, I've heard about this is, if you can, take a look and see how the employees are dressed at this job. It's, and that's especially easy to do if you have a friend or a family member who's already working at that company, but just kind of ask them what, what is, uh, what's the normal attire for this job? Is it, uh, is it business casual? Is it very casual? Is it formal? And the industry is gonna, gonna play a big role in how formal it is. A law firm is going to be going to expect more formal attire than say an IT job, which 
might be okay with jeans and a t-shirt because you're, you're there coding. It really doesn't, uh, it's not terribly important how you look. It's just uh, how well you can, uh, how well you can do the job. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely a good question. Um, something that I would, uh, I would scout, uh, I would scout that out uh, ahead of time if you can. Any final questions about LinkedIn Learning? And I see Andres has, has just joined us. Uh, thank you, Andres. I come to go ahead and mute you here because it sounds like you've got quite a bit going on in the background there, but I do, do thank you for joining us. And just, to, just want to remind anyone who's joined us uh, Mid session here that uh, this session is being recorded and will be available on the St. Louis County Library's YouTube channel. So let's move on to Gale courses. So I'm going to open up a new tab here. Go back to the St. Louis County Library's web page, click on, or actually not click on, but just rest my mouse on using the library and then come down to eCourses. And now I'm going to click on Gale courses. Gale courses are very similar to LinkedIn Learning. Uh, the big difference is that Gale courses are six week long instructor led courses, whereas LinkedIn Learning were pre recorded courses that usually lasted less than six weeks, but uh, they were. Uh, the Gale courses are a little a little more structured than LinkedIn Learning. Uh, there aren't as many Gale courses because uh, with a six week course, it's just not uh, not possible to have as many as many e courses with uh, with Gale as there are with LinkedIn. But what I recommend folks do is, if you're looking at deciding Gale courses or LinkedIn Learning. If you are someone who likes a very structured learning environment, you'd like to have an instructor there with you who can grade your work and encourage you, offer advice, things like that. Gale courses, probably the best one for you. If you're somebody who is a self-motivated learner, you're somebody who loves to just get in there and spend 20 minutes on a, on a short, quick, easy to learn course, then LinkedIn Learning may be the better option for you. But what I also like to suggest to people is try them both. Let's say you're taking a six week long Gale course and there are certain elements in that, uh, in that Gale course that you'd like a little, more, a little more work on. Well, that's okay. There may be a LinkedIn Learning course which covers some of that material in your Gale course that you'd like to know more about. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little bit more about Gale courses. I'm gonna get logged in here. So I click sign in, type in my email address and password. See if I can get it right this time. Okay, whoops, got to type my full email address and not. Okay, so I have no active courses. Uh, not surprising, I'm not, uh, not currently taking any, but uh, you'll notice it has my name up here in the upper right. So I'm just gonna click on home button right there. So we're back to the home. I'm gonna go ahead and accept those for now. So I'm just gonna type in interviewing in the search box up here at the top. So I'm just gonna go interview because it's the, the broadest. And the one that I like to use as an example because I've taken this course myself and really enjoyed it is 12 Steps to a Successful Job Search. You notice the, the earliest starting date is 
Wednesday. Okay, two days from now. The session start dates over here on the right side. I'm, I'm looking under the details section here on the right side. It says instructor-led course. Well, most Gale courses are instructor-led. Um, 24 hours in length. What this means is that the assumption is over a six-week period, you're going to be doing about four hours worth of work per week. You may do a little more, you may do a little less, but 24 hours is the estimate. Uh, duration of access, six weeks, no surprise there, and session start dates. Uh, we've got one coming up here, but the good news about Gale courses is that even if you miss the starting date, you can still take the course. What'll, what'll happen is um, you can join, I think up to two or even three weeks after the course has begun. And what the instructor will do is just uh, catch you up. Uh, uh, the, uh, he or she will assign you additional work in order to get caught up with the rest of the class. And then once you do that, then you'll be where everybody else is. I'm looking here in the middle under the detail tab, gives you a little bit about the course right here. And one of the things that I like about all the Gale courses is pretty extensive biography about the instructor. I'm, uh, I've, I've, I have to say, I've never, I've never had an instructor that I thought was inferior, was not a good instructor, um, both from Gale courses and LinkedIn Learning. I've, uh, I haven't always agreed with the, the instructors sometimes, um, but I, I, do, uh, I do respect the knowledge and, uh, and, the, and the, the teaching styles uh, that, uh, that the, the instructors have. I'm gonna click on syllabus. This shows us what we're going to be doing week to week. So we've got two lessons per week. And I'll let you have a look at what we've got here. And you notice just about half of this six week course is dedicated to interviewing. Weeks four, five, most of six is all about job, it's all about interviewing. So I'm glad to see that. So let's say that we wanted to enroll in the class now. We, we like what we see, actually no, let's, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So here are various start dates. I'm just gonna choose July 13th because it's the next one coming up, at least as of recording. Those of you seeing this on YouTube may see otherwise. So here is my student information. Most of this information is not right. Gives the old headquarters address there. I most certainly was not born in 1951, I'll have you know. Let me continue enrollment. And then it's confirming our student information over here on the left side. And then under submit, this is where we type in our St. Louis County Library card to confirm that we are a county library card holder. And I'm not going to do that because if I did, and then I click use library card, it would enroll me in the course. Now let's say that happens. Let's say that you are just experimenting with Gale courses and you enroll in a course by mistake. Don't worry about it. Uh, the, 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 you'll get a confirmation saying that you've enrolled in the course. You can just ignore that. What will happen is if you do not log into your course in two weeks after the course begins, they, the instructor will remove you from the course and no action will be taken against you. So feel free to 
experiment, play around. I, I don't want to do it myself, but uh, you can if you like. Uh, the instructors are uh, fully aware that uh, not everyone who signs up shows up to Gale courses. And my back button a couple more times because there's a couple more things I want to show you before we move on. I'm going to click on requirements here. And this shows you what you need in order to take the course. And that's, that's one of the things I really like about Gale courses in particular and online courses in general is there are no textbooks that you have to buy. There are no reading material that uh, that's not provided to you. Everything that you need to pass this course will be provided for you. The, the closest uh, caveat that I have to that is, let's say you're taking a digital cameras class. Uh, Gale Courses is not going to send you a digital camera that you can use to, to take the course. Uh, if they did do that, I'd probably take five or six digital camera courses just to make sure I had enough to uh, keep around to use, let's say. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to give you software programs or hardware, but they will give you all the reading material that you need to take the course. Click on student reviews. I have to admit, I've never seen a bad review. Uh, and it's, I, I, I don't think they're uh, cleaning out the, the negative reviews. I, I honestly do think that uh, these reviews are legit and any negative reviews or reviews that may not have been five stars were, uh, were removed. I don't think that's happening here. I just think it's a matter of the instructors doing a good job with, uh, with their instruction. Any final questions about Gale courses? One way to remember Gale courses, think six week instructor led courses. Way to remember LinkedIn Learning is shorter length courses, many more of them, but you don't get the instructor input that you get from, from Gale courses. Uh, I got a question. Yes, in Gale courses, you do get a certificate with your name. Good question. Any more questions about Gale courses? Oh, you're very welcome. Any more, any more Gale courses questions before we move on? Okay, I'm going to open up a new tab and go to first research. And first research is a little bit different than the other resources we're looking at today in that first research is actually a business database rather than a, a, a an e-learning resource or a tutorial resource. This is actually a database. So let's take a look. And Maybell's asking, uh, do you go to the library for the Gale courses? No, you can do this from home if you'd like. If you'd like to come to the library in order to, uh, to take a Gale course, uh, you can do that also. Just, uh, just be aware that uh, you'll definitely want to be using headphones if you're using one of our e-courses in the library. Definitely free in the library. Uh, Gale, Gale courses, LinkedIn learning, everything that, we're, everything that we're using today is free. Uh, and also, you, you may want to may want to make sure the branch that you're using uh, isn't very busy that day because there's a chance that you may be bumped off uh, if you're there for a, a, a long length of time. But uh, I, I would make sure that before, uh, before you start on, uh, on your Gale courses. But yes, you, you could use Gale courses either from your own home on your own computer or using a library computer. I'm going to click on research this time. And then resources A to Z. And the research we're going to be looking at today is 
first research. Here we go. So first research is an industry database and it was created so that salespeople could learn as much as they could about an industry before they start making cold calls. And you're going to see some of that, that uh, business person you know, mentality or philosophy inside this, uh, inside this database, but it's also one of our best interview preparation tools, and I'll show you why. So let's click on submit. And then inside the search box, we can type in an industry. So somebody in chat, type in an industry that you'd like to have a look at. Maybe an industry that you are currently interviewing in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and choose. I'm going to type in restaurants because I know that restaurants are having difficulty finding employees. So just type in restaurants and here's a few options we have up here. Uh, I'm just going to choose the general restaurants here. You could be a little more specific. They have certain types of restaurants. And that's one of the great things about this database is they give not just the broad industries, but some of the narrow ones also. So just click on restaurants. And this, this report was updated June 13th, 2022. So we have information here that is less than one month old. I always love it when we're getting new information. So I'm going to click on full profile up here in the upper right because I want to see everything. I want to see the entire report. So the first roughly one third of this report is going to be an industry overview. The second two thirds at the bottom are going to be more interview preparation. This is a great database in a lot of ways. What this can do is help you evaluate an industry very quickly to let you know whether you might want to continue gathering information on this industry. You might look at this and see that restaurants may not be what you're looking for. So you spend 20 minutes reading through this entire report rather than spending hours or days to find out that same information. So let's just take a look through the industry overview section of first research. It gives, gives us some companies to watch. Tells us restaurant technology. Regional highlights, human resources tells you what sort of people get hired in this industry. These two graphs tell you national average salary in yellow, the line graph, and then the bar graph in blue, average salary for this industry. So what we're seeing here is that the restaurant industry pays quite a bit below the national average salary. But from what I've been hearing, restaurants are starting to have to pay more money because it's very difficult to find employees these days. Industry growth rating high, it's a great thing to see. 
news and social is literally daily news on this industry. Quarterly industry update gives us quarterly trends, challenges, opportunities. But what I like about this is it also gives us the industry impact. And you'll notice we're getting more, uh, the, farther we, the farther we go back in time, the more COVID-19 information that we're seeing here. So staffing struggles and, and price hikes. Those might be opportunities for people looking, looking to get into the, the restaurant industry as employees. Industry forecast shows you how fast is this industry growing? So 2021 was a big year. And I'm guessing the reason why 2021 was so good was that 2020 was so bad. I don't remember what 2020's losses were, but they were they were significant. But even 2022's 9.5, 2023's 8.2. I mean, in most industries, if you're growing at a 9.5 or an 8.2%, you're doing well. Industry drivers, consumer spending, no surprise there. Critical issues, business challenges. This lets you know what's going on in this industry. How are they, how are they hurting? How are they succeeding? These are the types of things that the CEOs, CFOs, presidents of these companies, even managers of individual restaurants are thinking about. And if, if you want to, if you want to interview well with the restaurant manager, knowing what's keeping the restaurant manager awake at night is a good thing to know because maybe you can help that manager solve those problems. So business trends, industry opportunities. Executive insight. This is where the database literally sits down with the, the C-suite administrators in restaurant companies and asks them, what's keeping you awake at night? Remember, we're talking about what's keeping the manager awake. Well, this, this is what keeps the higher ups in these companies awake at night. So understanding what these pain points are, that's another way of saying it, where, where is the pain in this organization? And as a potential employee, when you're sitting there in an interview, you're gonna to wanna to know what the pain points are for the industry and what the pain points are for that particular company so that you can show them how you can reduce their pain by hiring you. So here's what the other departments are concerned about. Executive conversation starters. Remember, we, we talked about uh, this being a great database for salesmen to conduct cold calls. Well, Here's where we start to see some of that, but this information is still valuable for us because these are potential interview questions, questions that you might ask them and questions they might ask you, and they give you the answers. So here are some conversation starters. These can be good for if you're in an interview and maybe the interview starts to kind of lag. Maybe the, the questions aren't coming as fast and furious as they were and you want to kind of re-energize the interview. 
here so you can do that. Or these can be just plain old interview questions that you're asking them. And just like before, you're getting the answer to these questions. Or if you get an answer from the restaurant that looks significantly different than what you're seeing here, maybe ask a few more of these questions to see maybe there's something off with that restaurant. I mean, this would be, to me, something pretty obvious, but what does the company consider when developing menus? I wouldn't have even thought to ask that. Compared to other first research industry reports, this one is fairly long. Uh, others that other industries may not be quite this long, but uh, you will get some good information, even if it's a even if it's, it's even if it's a smaller report. Here is the financial information section. Uh, this is the section that people either love, and that's a small minority of people who really love this section. Those are the the finance side, accounting, folks like that. Uh, this is also a section a lot of other people don't really get a lot of use out of, but it's here for your reading pleasure. And then finally at the bottom, they've got a list of industry websites and a glossary of acronyms. Anybody have any questions about FIRST Research? If so, put them in the chat. And we are in good shape on time here. So I'm gonna open up a new tab and go to Brain Views. So back to St. Louis County Library's website. I'm just gonna rest my mouse on research and then resources A to Z. Click on B for brain fuse. And scroll down to brain fuse job now. Again, this is going to be replacing tutor.com and there is all kinds of information on the site. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And we'll get out of there. So a lot of ways we can go here. I'm gonna scroll down because I wanna show you interview resources here. And this dress for the interview may help uh, whomever in the chat was asking about how to dress for the interview. This may help. 100 Potential Interview Questions by Monster.com. You can combine this information with what you're getting from first research. So here's a, the pathway to interview success, step-by-step -step guide through the interview process. And my back button here. Interview tips, let's take a look at these. Let's just take a look at before the interview. Okay. 
happy interview for her. And further down the page. And then they've also got live interview questions. And this, this is probably my favorite section of Brain Fuse when it comes to interviewing is what you can do is get online one-on-one -on -one with an interview coach and let them know what type of job you're applying for. And you can set up a live interview where they will ask you interview questions and then you'll do an interview with them, a, a practice interview. And then at the end, what they'll do is uh, tell you what you did well, and then give you some pointers on what you can improve on. But uh, I've seen this, uh, I've, I've, I've not done it myself, but I've, I've seen uh, a video of someone else doing this. And it seemed to be a really encouraging, positive interface. And the, uh, the interviewer, the coach was, uh, was very, very patient. Um, and you know was was good at giving the the verbal cues when you're when you're in, when you're in an interview and you you want somebody to you know say a little more about uh, about what they had had just said kind of clarify some of their uh, some of their statements so it was a uh, really really positive experience so I was uh, really glad to see that again this is uh, this is called brain views. Uh, Highly recommended. It's uh, we, we've had this at the county library for oh about uh, about five or six months now, and uh, I've used it five or six times just in, in various. Uh, I've all I've also used it to help people with resumes. Uh, you can um, you can get one on one uh, resume assistance, but what you can also do is upload your resume to them, and you you tell them what job you're applying for. And it'll show the requirements for that job. And then you'll get some feedback on your resume of how to improve it and how to make it more, uh, more relevant for, for the job that you're applying for. So that's also something that, uh, that I encourage you to take a look at. Any questions about brain views? Okay, any questions about anything else that we've looked at today? Okay, because we've got another 12 minutes or so, I just wanna show you one more thing here, and that is how to book a librarian. So I'm gonna go back to the County Library's homepage and just go where we were earlier on, just hover your mouse on using the library and then come down to book a librarian. Give us your name, give us your email address so that we can contact you and tell us when's the best time to contact you. Uh, tell us uh, what meeting option you prefer. We're now uh, now doing what uh, in-person book a librarians at branches. Uh, uh, earlier, we were only doing them via Zoom, but Zoom is is also an option, as is uh, email. The the two that I would recommend would be uh, would be Zoom and uh, and in person. Uh, also, let us know if you want the in branch experience. Which branch is best for you? Tell us what you want to learn inside the topic. Confirm that you are not a robot, and then click submit. That's all I have for you today. I wish everybody a good evening. I want to thank you for coming out today. Hope to learn something. Hope you had a good time. And hope to see you again for more of our more of our programs. Take care.